most useful 12 months ago, what would have helped me move forward and um, get to where I wanted to be. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the Ogilvy stuff and also just some, uh, I guess, hacks, uh, cheats, whatever, how to just kind of, how I got from undergraduate to employment without any sort of horrible transitional period where, you know, you have to go live back with your parents and all that kind of stuff. Um, so excuse me if I keep flicking to my phone because I only really found out what today is about yesterday, so I didn't really have too much time to... Um, work out exactly what I was going to say to you guys. So I kind of jotted some stuff down. So, yeah, so Shannon's already given you a brief introduction um, as to what I've done, where I am. So my name's Ross. I work at Ogilvy One, which, as Nicole said, is the more kind of digital area, even though the whole agency is digital. Um, it's almost exclusively digital at Ogilvy One. Um, I'm in user experience. The reason for that is because um, I love behavioral psychology. I have a background in technology um, and also... I never really saw myself as a particularly strong creative thinker. I saw myself more as um, a rational thinker that also had a creative um, element to me, I guess. Um, user experience just seemed to encapsulate this, um, these qualities, um, so I felt like I could apply my skill set best to that role. And I'll get more into that in a minute, but oh, and if you guys don't know what user experience is, I didn't either, as Shannon said, and to be honest, everybody I speak to 
They have no clue either. Generally, it just basically m means that you're making things not suck. So you just kind of take whatever that is, um, you go through it as a consumer, as a user, whatever, and you just kind of um, isolate problems with the system, whether that's a Facebook app, um, a game, a website, whatever, and you just kind of help smooth that process and make it the most enjoyable experience possible. Um, in the long run, that obviously means increased engagement, increased conversion, increased revenue, ultimately. So, yes, um, firstly, I know that when I was sitting there and I would speak to people that, um, as that board has there, um, some of them guys up there were, were a year above me, um, when they would talk about, oh yeah, I came straight from graduation into Ogilvy, it's a really cool job, blah, 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 I would assume, oh okay, so you're probably going to be a straight A student that maybe done every single thing possible extracurricular that you could do, and that's how you ended up in, in that position. But that's definitely not the case with me. Um, yes, I was a fairly good student, I would say, when I was younger, um, but without boring you too much, um, I ended up pursuing activities outside of academia just because it excited me more. I found um, learning didn't really work with my personality style. Um, and when I came here, to be honest, I didn't really do a huge amount of extracurricular stuff. I think the opportunities here, because it's such an awesome university, um, there's, there's just too many, to be blunt. Um, literally, you could end up doing four or five things at once, continually, throughout your courses. I found what really worked for me was to actually um, identify the key opportunities and almost kind of, um, obviously in my head I didn't really do it, but I guess you kind of do a cost versus benefit analysis, I suppose. And some opportunities are clearly going to just burn your time so, so fast and maybe not have a, a super awesome output at the end, whereas other opportunities are going to be really, really easy, quick wins for you guys. Um, that's something that I wish was highlighted to me when I started, because at first I kind of threw myself into everything, and then I'd done what I normally done and got kind of bored with it, because I didn't find some of it great, and ended up pursuing my own stuff, which didn't really integrate into the course very well. And then I kind of came back around and found this balance. So definitely, definitely look at all the opportunities and just kind of really identify which ones are going to actually get you to where you want to be, and then just focus on them and do them really, really well, rather than doing everything. And um, irrelevant of whether you want to get into advertising or not, um, this internship is definitely one of those opportunities. So I can genuinely sit here and say that I'm 100% convinced the rest of my life is going to be significantly different. Um, it's forked off in a very distinct way because of this internship. And all of that ultimately came down to me just rehashing my CV one evening, handing it in. Um, I s told Nicole this when I actually spoke to her about what I wanted to do at the agency. I didn't really know what Ogilvy was when I actually applied, because advertising isn't something I'd looked at at all. But then I was aware that it was a big company, and um, Robert Chapman, I don't know if any of you guys have actually, yeah, you, some of you are, le um, are learning under him. He kept going on at me to hand in my CV to Ogilvy, and I didn't, didn't have a clue why, but I was like, sure, it sounds like it's a good opportunity. So I redone my CV and done it. And genuinely, where would I be now if I hadn't done that? I don't know. Maybe it would be good. Maybe it wouldn't be good. I don't know. But clearly, the rest of my life is going to be massively different because now I'm at an agency. I can get years of experience at this agency that, you know, you mention it and people know where, where you are and what you're doing and that, and that you're an overachiever if you're there, which is great. Um, exactly. I'm not an Oxbridge grad, um, grad at all. I actually came from Essex. Um, a horrible, horrible part of Essex, in fact. And, um, you know, I've ended up at Ogilvy. And, yeah, so I think a really cool point to take from that is that, ultimately, it was just because I spent these three hours hashing out my CV. And just like I said a minute ago, that was one of these quick wins that you can do here at Ravensbourne. You've got some awesome connections. You can throw yourself in front of people that, that you wouldn't otherwise get a chance to even to catch their glare. So... A three-hour evening of sitting there, making sure your CV is nicely formatted, making sure that you've just worded it nicely. Even if you don't even have the best stuff to go on there, just word it nicely, format it nicely, throw it in front of the right people. So Ogilvy, for example, and look what can come out of it. You know, you could spend weeks and weeks doing, um, I don't know, one of the many, many opportunities here. Um, I, I know I done the Mozilla Fest, the uh, social media w um, week stuff all of that, and that would take weeks and weeks of my time, and yes, there would be a payoff at the end, but not necessarily as big as simply having a good CV, simply having a LinkedIn profile that's actually proper, or simply going on these like broadcasting websites and just throwing yourself in, at the industry. Um, 
there's so many quick wins. Just, just need to learn how to identify them, definitely. Um, so yeah, excuse me while I just check my phone again because some other points I wanted to hit on for you. Oh yeah, so um, yeah, another thing that I found really, really helpful, and I think it's probably one of the key reasons why Ogilvy actually hired me. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this whole T-shaped skills profile thing that seems to be a buzzword at the moment. Um, it's basically a case of um, you have a broad range of skills. So uh, it's them phrases, you know, jack of all trades, um, fingers in pies, all that kind of stuff. And then you have one specialization, which is the stalk off the T, I I guess. Um, it basically, I think it's great because it really does play to our advantage. We are a generation that's grown up with digital and we've grown up with such rapid change that change doesn't alarm us. You know, we can throw ourselves into something, have a million new things that we've never ever done before and just kind of not blag it because we do know what we're doing, but we can be comfortable and confident in new things in a ways that I know my mum never ever could. You know, I can get her to try and book, um, oh, she can't even use Google Maps. If I remember when I was younger and I'd ask for a lift somewhere and she would freak out at the thought of driving somewhere that she didn't know and she had no clue what Google Maps was and she'd use AA Route Planner, etc. Um, we're not that generation. We are a generation where we can just adapt so quickly and so efficiently and just get things done. Exactly like Nicole said, we can just get things done in a way that peop other people maybe can't or maybe they're just very, very focused in one particular area so their skills aren't as transferable as ours. Yeah, or they're more strategists, yeah. Um, so definitely just try and um, identify your strengths and weaknesses, not only as a generation, but also um, individually as well. Um, and just do what you can to, to expand those skills and to build this T-shaped profile so that when you do end up at, at for example, an agency such as Ogilvy, um, I originally got, came to Ravensbourne because I wanted to do comedy and directing. I ended up at Ogilvy, and um, as Shannon said, we ended up kind of hunting for a position that would actually play to my skill set and to my passions, because advertising wasn't something that I particularly saw myself in originally. Um, and luckily, because of this T-shaped skill profile and the whole Generation Y stuff and all that kind of, I don't know, um, that meant that I, I could fit into so many different roles there and actually not only fit into what they needed from the person that took that position, but also actually add something. Um, I could add my personality to the role um, in a way that was truly unique to me, and that was something that was that I definitely do feel is celebrated at Ogilvy. We learn more from you than you do from us. I like to think so, but <laughs> I'm not sure how true that is. But um, yeah, I mean, definitely, um, when I was going through the recruitment process, um, one of the key things that did keep coming up was, what do you want to do here? What can you bring here? What are you passionate about bringing to Ogilvy? rather than this is the position, this is how we want to shoehorn you into it, do you fit that, you know? And that's something that's, I feel, such a unique opportunity and that I've never had in jobs before. Um, and it just means that now, I've actually, I feel like I can be more creative and more productive than I've ever been just because I've got that freedom to actually express myself in terms of what am I passionate about and what do I actually want to do, not just what do I have to do. Um, yeah, um, yeah, that was that was actually all of this. So, do you want this? Yeah, um, I was going to say thank you so much for coming down today, and we've actually got an award um, designed by one of our prototype students in level two for you guys just for coming down today. Um, so this is for you. You're welcome. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, and um, is, is there any questions anyone would like to ask? Yeah, so basically I'd done the internship throughout my th um, final year at Ravensbourne. Um, I interviewed for positions at Ogilvy in, I think it was... The January, I think. Something like that, wasn't yeah. it? So I ended up with the, um, with the contract all signed and done by April. Um, and that obviously came from the internship. They knew exactly who I was and what I was about. Um, so they were just kind of keen to get me into the agency as quick as possible. And yeah, it just meant I could avoid that, you know, spending a summer hunting, um, giving out CVs and and all that kind of stuff. So I assume that's what all of you guys are kind of ideally looking for. Um, so just to kind of rant on in, in response to you quickly, and, and, I mean... And that was Shannon doing that. She, you know, she kind of it makes it her job 
to make sure that all of her interns, her babies, are, uh, find a home within the agency that, you know, as Ross was, ta Ross was talking about, is the right fit. Yeah, and um, I think one other point actually that I really want to kind of get across to you guys today as well, um, and again, I'm, I'm so glad I kind of got this message when I was, when I was in your position, but you're currently at a, at a university that's so tightly interwoven and integrated throughout so many different industries. There's so many eyes on you guys at the moment. Um, just like when I was in your position, just flaunt yourself. Just make sure people see you because, you know, to be blunt, just from, from my experiences with um, people that graduated with me, they didn't necessarily do that. And now they're, they've left Ravensbourne and you know, to be frank, nobody really gives much of a shit about them. They're kind of left, and it's now the summer, they're handing out CVs, they're moved back up north to their parents, they're coming down to London specifically just to hand out CVs. It's such a chore. It really is a massive ball lake that you can avoid. So just use this two years. It's like 3% of your total life. Just hammer it now, and then you can take it easy afterwards. It's so worth it. And, and we take it sp specifically, we look at second year students. So we start speed dating process in the May time. Um, so then you have the whole summer that you can come in and work with us and then you start your final year in the September. So then you've got a whole year of working with us right up to when you graduate. So there, there was a reason why we did that so that we could ha you know, it's not like a week's work experience or a month's work experience where literally you're just given, you know, uh, a pile of rubbish because no one's got any time for you. You are interwoven into the fabric of Ogilvy Life. Um, so that's, that's quite yeah. important. I think, the, I think the benefit of that really is, is it's not just a two-week work experience. It's, it's not a place where, oh gosh, sorry. It's not working very well for me, this one. Um, it's basically, being there for that year makes the absolute difference. Even if you're only there for nine weeks in person at the very least, it means that everyone sees you as part of the agency. They see you having a drink in the bar in the evening. They see you walking around, you say hi, you chat in the lift. Um, you get, you know, the first, few weeks that my last set of students who were there at the moment, I s they spent two weeks just speaking to people, just walking around, introducing themselves, trying to get to know different people in different departments. And again, that comes back to that convergence of creativity and we're trying to get people with different skills. As long as they're creative, put them in somewhere where they want to be. It doesn't have to be the creative department. A lot of people who do come into the internship often think, I want to be a creative. And when they arrive and realize that we're quite a large company and we handle a load of clients, so to be able to be a creative, you don't get to do the conceptualizing, the you know, make, coming up with the ideas, they don't get to then do the design work and then actually be the creative director and the copywriter. You do one or the other because there is a lot of work to be turned out really quickly. And, and, and we've had quite a few clients where they will ask for the Ravensbourne interns. So BA, for instance, over the Olympics, they were paid for to run a, a social media campaign a dedicated BA room that was set up at Ogilvy, answering everyone's tweets and, 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 and sending out lots of kind of information for BA. That was all run by the Ravensbourne interns. We had about six or seven of them, and, um, and they were literally working the whole summer and being paid for it. And from that, one of them thought, oh, maybe I should film that room because it looked like such a space agey room. And no one else had thought of that. And that footage is now instrumental in what that room looked like at the time. Nobody else even thought about that. Also, just to add to that, actually, um, it's not just about the agency getting to know you for a year and seeing where you can fit in. Like I said before, they do celebrate your individuality, and it's just as much you guys being lucky enough to ha basically do exactly what I done and spend a year seeing if the agency is actually right for you. So, like, when are you ever going to really get the opportunity in life to interview for a job that you already know exactly what you're talking about? You you know exactly what you're going to get into if if you do get that job. You know, you go in blind 99% of the time. This isn't one of those times. You can spend a year making sure the agency is right for you before you even interview. So this is the kind of stuff that the labs does. It's, it's a very disruptive department within Ogilvy. So it's turning on its head the usual process of looking for talent and, um, and, and finding the right mix. So, uh, and, it's, and it works. It's been working for the last, we are now on our, is it third year, Shannon? We've third year. Employed with, and we've employed so far um, six people. So one was a lighting technician, which not in a million years would you ever have thought that a lighting technician would come and work at an ad agency, or an ad agency would have even employed a lighting technician. 
we employed um, a broadcast student who now is lab creative technologist, a content student who's now a UX designer, a graphic designer, I mean Millie, um, who now works in new business because the creative saw her book and said, oh no, no, she's not for me. But we could see that there was something very, very special about her. So I pushed her into the new business department and said, stop with your crappy PowerPoint presentations and have a look at what this girl is doing. She's revolutionized the new business department. So it really is shaking it all up and, um, and there are opportunities there for lots of you. Does that all make sense, what we've been going through? Any more questions? Good. Any other questions? So I'm going to move on over that. I can't actually hear what you're saying. Okay, so um, I didn't actually have a three minute interview because I was. Um, we did I, know, speak, I think it was a newish program, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. But I did have a pretty terrifying interview with Nicole in her office there. <laughs> um, and to be blunt, I actually didn't really sell myself super well. Um, there was um, two other guys in the room with me, and so it was kind of like a collective speed date. It was, um, you know, it was a more informal kind of thing. Um, the other two had portfolios, they were design students, one was I think a product designer, and one was more design. Um, they kind of went on, um, went through their interview uh, portfolio, so I, saying this and that, this is my work, this is what was behind it. Um, all I actually done in my, um, I guess, three minute speed date thing, um, was actually, I don't know if you remember, but I was there really awkwardly saying, oh, to be honest, I don't actually have a portfolio because I'm not design. I was more um, functional in my work. So a all doer, it's got a doer. Yeah, exactly. I, that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, I, I am someone that just does things, I get things done. Um, and I have a lot of, I guess, guerrilla qualities, I suppose, oh. in, in what I do. And that was what I um, tried to portray to Nicole. And um, yeah, that, that was what got me through that, through that process. So it's not all about having a fancy portfolio and um, having done, completed four or five advertising briefs here that you can flaunt. It is for some departments, that's all they want. You know, so that's why Millie, the motion graphic, 3D motion graphic designer, did not work in that creative department because she just didn't fit the usual stereotypical um, person that they've always looked for throughout their whole you know, em employment um, you know, since they've been doing it. What I look for is people that don't stand out. But that's, that's the lab thing, and that's what our internship is about. It's looking for the ones that you just wouldn't look to employ in a million years, but it works to push them forward into the 21st century. So they're not cookie cutters employing the same people they already have year after year after year after year. So the reason I like Ross was because he was a bit random, and he was a doer. I think that's and a compliment. That it's a compliment. Um, and doers are so um, hard to come by. There's lots of people thinking, lots of ideas, and ideas normally end up in the bottom drawer if you can't physically make them happen. And I find the Ravensbourne students, majority of them get shit done. And, and that, for me, is the most important thing moving Ogilvy forward within kind of that lab environment. We live in difficult and challenging times. The whole nature of university education and how it's funded is changing dramatically. We need to be more commercial to remain competitive. And as such, what we need is a special relationship. The relationship with Ravensbourne and Ogilvy, Ogilvy Labs started probably about four or five years ago. It's a no-brainer that Ravensbourne and Ogilvy should develop some kind of pioneering new relationship. We had an amazing vision of, of moving Ravensbourne next to the O2 with this unbelievable building. At Ravensbourne, I did broadcast production and operation. We've just had the seven students from Ravensbourne over. I think we had a combination of production development, fashion, motion graphics and content creation. And content creation. I'm part of a set of well-established SMEs here at Ravensbourne. Uh, we've got access to all manner of facilities, including cameras, post-production facilities, and the fastest broadband network in Europe. 
we've managed to win a bit of new business off the back of having Raymond Dubois as a partner. We got together a team of 30 students to uh, manage the Twitter feeds for one of Ogilvy's main clients, British Airways. So we had um, our content and web students actually responding and tweeting to members of the public. Um, so they got involved in the Olympics and in their huge campaign as well, which was absolutely fantastic. And they got paid for it as well. Using Ravensport is a good way to actually keep the company updated with the sort of the, the new future of work really. The students that we're bringing in, not only do they have the technical skills, but they also have the creative side as well. The relationship with Ogilvy uh, has been very positive and very fruitful so far. Uh, I've worked with them on a number of different projects as a media producer, uh, most notably last year uh, for Cisco and this year for Philips. There's this moment in time when the culture means that we can create special relationships with companies like Ogilvy, absolutely bring the operation of the company into the heart of the learning and education and training of Ravensbourne, which means um, a new and more dynamic individual can earn their living, prosper um, and make a contribution to UK PLC.